1957, Genovese crime family mobster and future conciliary Bobby Manor allegedly ordered the double homicide of Patrick Martinetti and Marino Romito. Both men found shot to death in the back seat of a car. Let's check it out. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organized crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today, we're going to take a quick look at a 1957 double murder orchestrated by members of the Genovese crime family. On the 1st of December 1957, the bodies of Patrick Paddy the Priest Martinetti and Marino Romito were found by a five-year-old girl shot to death in the back of a car in New Jersey. As one newspaper reported, Jersey City, New Jersey. The bullet-riddled bodies of two Jersey City longshoremen were found slumped in the rear seat of a sedan parked in a residential neighbourhood here Sunday. Police said the sedan had apparently been parked there after the men had been shot somewhere else. The men, one of whom had a local police record dating back to 1925, were noticed by a curious five-year-old girl who peered into the back seat of the 1954 sedan. Police identified the victims as Patrick Martinetti, 45, and Marino Romito, 28. Martinetti's local police record dates back to 1925, the officers said. He did time in Sing Sing in 1934 on an assault conviction and was last arrested in 1953 on a gambling charge. Romito was also a reputed small-time gambler. The death car was his, police said. According to an informant, the principal individuals involved in this double homicide were mobsters associated with the Genovese crime family. They were Louis Bobby Manor, James Jimmy Knapp Napoli, Salvatore Sally Bugs Bergoglio, George Martinelli, Thomas Principe, Larry Dentico, Nicky Matucci, Vinny Matliano, and Jewish hitman Harold K.O. Konersberg. So, what do we know about the two victims? Patrick Paddy the Priest Martinetti, who was in his 40s when he was murdered, had been a career criminal with a record dating back to 1925. Over his career, he amassed 37 arrests. He did take a break from his criminal escapades when on November the 13th, 1942, he enlisted in the military and fought in World War II. He became a gunner with the 589th Field Artillery Battalion in Northern France and he would later fight in the famous Battle of the Bulge. Martinetti would be wounded in battle, shot in both legs, and then honourably discharged on August 3, 1945. He was awarded numerous commendations for his service. As one newspaper reported, his decorations included the American Service Medal, the Purple Heart, the Good Conduct Medal, a Medal of Valour, the Victory Medal. After returning to the United States, Paddy the Priest resumed his criminal career and just over a year after leaving the military was arrested on October the 15th, 1946 for bookmaking. As mentioned, Martinetti would amass further arrests in the years leading up to his murder. Paddy the Priest also had ties to the waterfront where he had been a longshoreman. The other man murdered Marino Romito was 28 when he was shot to death. One newspaper reported some information on his personal history. It read, Romito, a stocky former ski trooper who trained with the army in Colorado, lived at 413 3rd Street, Jersey City, with his wife and three children. Last summer, he had worked as a Little League baseball coach for the Jersey City Department of Recreation. Prior to that, he had been a longshoreman. More recently, he was a labourer. At some point, it appears that Romito had followed his friend Martinetti into a life of crime. On the day that Romito and Martinetti were last seen by their families, the two friends had told their wives that they were going on a hunting trip together. So, why were the pair of former longshoremen murdered? And what happened? It appears that along with several mobsters connected with the Genovese crime family, Romito and Martinetti had purchased a hijacked truckload of cobalt. But Bobby Manor was concerned that Paddy the Priest 
and Marino Rometti were informants. One of the men involved in their murder, Harold K.O. Konersberg, would later turn government informer, and his account of the double homicide is in the following FBI file. It reads, Konersberg stated approximately two to three days before the hit of Paddy the Priest and his partner. He and Martinelli went to Bobby Manor's apartment located over the Wonder Bar on 2nd Street in Jersey City, New Jersey. Vincent Matliano, Jimmy Knapp, Bobby Manor and Nicky Matucci were also present. The motive for the hit was the hijacking of a truckload of cobalt, which an Irish crew from New Jersey sold to Jimmy Knapp, Nicky Matucci and Paddy the Priest and Paddy the Priest's partner. At this meeting, Bobby Manor did all the talking and he wanted to teach everyone a lesson. It was stated that Paddy the Priest and this other individual were informants and it was feared they would involve them in the hijacking case. Manor wanted the job done immediately. Konigsberg would further state of the killings. Bobby Manor explained that Paddy the Priest and Romito were causing trouble with an Irish crew in New York and wanted to know if Martinelli would help them get rid of Paddy the Priest and Romito. Konigsberg recalled that the trouble had something to do with the hijacking of a load of cobalt. The six of them talked it over and Martinelli agreed that he would kill Paddy the Priest and Romito with his crew if Bobby Manor and his crew set them up. Martinelli stated that they had appointments the next couple of nights and asked that the victims be set up two nights from then. Manor agreed to this. Martinelli and Konigsberg then went to the satellite bar Hoboken, New Jersey and met with Tommy Principe and Sal Brigulio. Martinelli told Tommy and Sal of the contract and that Paddy the Priest and Romito would be coming to this bar at which time they would be taken. Konigsberg would then state to the FBI exactly how this double homicide went down. The next night, Konigsberg picked up George Martinelli at Larry Dentico's house in New York, and Martinelli had the guns to be used in this killing. George brought one machine gun and half a dozen handguns and supplied them to Sal Regulio and Tommy Principe, who kept them until they were used the following night. Konigsberg and Martinelli went to see Bobby Manor and told Bobby to send Paddy the Priest and Romito to the satellite bar on the following night and ask for Tommy Principe as Tommy supposedly had a message for them. On the next night, Martinelli, Konigsberg, Brigulio and Principe set up at the satellite bar to kill Paddy the Priest and Romito. Tommy Principe was inside the bar waiting for the arrival of the victims and it was planned that after they arrived, Tommy would walk outside with them where they would be grabbed by Martinelli, Brigulio and Konigsberg. A spot was left along the curb near the bar for the victims to park their car. George Martinelli, armed with a machine gun and a handgun, was in a doorway next to the bar and Konigsberg was on a stoop near the bar, also armed. Brigulio had another car double parked near the bar and he was also armed. The victims came out of the bar with Tommy Principe and were immediately surrounded by Konigsberg, Martinelli and Brigulio. Martinelli put Romito in the back of Paddy the Priest's car and got into the back seat with him. Paddy the Priest was placed in the front seat of the car with Konigsberg and Brigulio also in the front seat. Brigulio was driving this car. Tommy Principe followed this car driving Sal Brigulio's Buick which had been double parked. They drove out to Patterson Plank Road and stopped. Martinelli in the back seat shot Romito with a handgun. Konigsberg then made Paddy the Priest climb into the back seat and George Martinelli tried to kill him but his gun jammed. Martinelli had an automatic. Some guy in the front seat leaned over and shot Paddy the Priest more than once killing him. Konigsberg had two guns on him at this time, an automatic and a revolver. After the killings they drove off with Tommy Principe still following. They parked the car on a quiet street the name of which Konigsberg does not remember, and left the bodies in the back seat. The three then walked to the Buick which Tommy was driving and drove away. Martinelli and Konigsberg then took a ride to Newark to eat in the Novelty Bar. They still had the guns used in the killing. Konigsberg was driving 
and they went on Route 53 into Caucus, New Jersey, and Konigsberg got lost. Martinelli then got behind the wheel and started driving. Still on Route 53, they went over a little bridge which had a man in the tower. Konigsberg got out on the bridge and threw the two guns used in this killing into the water. The man in the tower observed this but did not talk to them. Martinelli and Konigsberg then went to Newark, ate, and Martinelli dropped Konigsberg off at his home in Bayonne. Konigsberg stated that he did not see Manor for several months after it, and Manor never mentioned this episode to him. Interestingly, despite Konigsberg's account that George Martinelli shot Romito, and that after his gun jammed, another guy, presumably Konigsberg himself, shot Paddy the Priest, Ballistical analysis stated that the murder had been carried out by just one gun. As one newspaper reported, their findings were that the shots had been fired from one gun, possibly a foreign made 7.65, but more likely an American made 32. Ultimately, whatever the truth of the story, the outcome remained the same. The murders had been carried out on Thanksgiving, and the bodies were not found for three days. Whether Marino Romito and Patrick Paddy the Priest Martinetti were in fact informants is not confirmed. But this was part of the reason that Bobby Manor stated and the fates of the pair of friends was sealed. Let me know your thoughts on this story in the comments below. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.